What is up guys, welcome back to Pokemon Sword and Shield, or should I say Pokemon Shield, because today we've got a Pokemon Shield exclusive episode in which we're going to be taking on the Stoan side gym, but right now I'm actually in the Giant's Mirror, I believe, which is the name of this section in the wild area, pretty close by to the entrance to Hammerlock. Because here in Pokemon Shield, you can actually find an exclusive Galarian variant only during the overcast weather, which on the map looks like the little sun with the cloud in front of it. So if you come here and look around in the grass, you might notice these peculiar little white rock things laying around. And if you run into one, you'll find out that it is actually Corsola in the Galar region has taken a different form. And it is actually a Pokemon I want to add on to my team here in Pokemon Shield. So we're going to cycle through a couple of Pokeballs here and toss one out to hopefully catch and learn a little bit more about this Galarian regional variant because Corsola looks a little bit sadder than it does in other regions. So let's get that in the Pokedex and you will see a very sad little Corsola, which is actually a ghost type here in Galar. Sudden climate change wiped out this ancient kind of Corsola. This Pokemon absorbs others' life force through its branches. So yeah, even Pokemon is trying to let people know that climate change is real in the Pokemon world as well. Just like the coral reefs are being wiped out in the real world, it looks like the coral reefs of the Pokemon world are actually causing severe damage to Corsola. So, I just wanted to raise awareness by catching our own little Corsola here. Like I said, in the Giant's Mirror area with the overcast weather, you can see these little meteorite looking white rocks uh, moving around. And it is exclusive to Pokemon Shield, uh, being the counterpart to Galarian Farfetch slash Surfetched, which means that this little Corsola might just have an evolution as well. So be sure to grab one if you're playing Pokemon Shield. Now let's get to today's episode as we find ourselves here in Stoan side. And I actually didn't get to show off this little cutscene introducing the town in Pokemon Sword because my dumb butt had skip movies turned on in the options. So I've made sure to turn that off now, but just for Stoan side, we get to see the cutscene at least here in Pokemon Shield. And now we're ready to take on the Stoan side gym here in Pokemon Shield version but not before our rival hop, of course. And just for the sake of repetition, or rather not repeating things, I'll probably just highlight this battle until we get inside the gym. But I still do want to show off a little bit of my team members here in this version, because I've been training up a completely different roster of Pokemon, so let's see how they do. And I guess I'm also curious whether Hop here will have any different Pokemon himself, but it looks like he's starting off with Cramorant, just like he did over in Sword, so... Nothing different so far. What is different though is the levels of my Pokemon. As you can see, my starter was Sobble, named Alphys after the greatest Undertale character of all times. Okay, I don't know about that one actually, but I do like Alphys. I just don't know if she's my favorite, but it is still a Drizzile at level 32. So somehow in Pokemon Sword, I've either been training a lot more or catching a lot more wild Pokemon. Uh, because I don't think I've done too many match raid battles, and on this copy, I've also taken on almost every single trainer in every route, so I feel like my levels should be a lot closer, but for some reason, they're not. Either way, it's definitely enough to take down Raboot there, who is going to be the evolution of Score Bunny. I believe we'd seen it before, but looks like the rest of Hop's team will be the same as Silly Cobra's coming out here, but... Alphys could actually use as much experience as we can get, so that we can hopefully get its evolution at the end of this episode as well. We had Mojo, or Rillaboom now, evolve over in Pokemon Sword, so it'd be pretty cool to have the double starter evolution for the double dose of episodes. Alright Hop, I believe in you dude, just one more Pokemon left, you can do it man! You just gotta take down six of our Pokemon in a row. <laughs> Little baby's gonna do it, I believe! Or we can get a critical hit and destroy it. Ouch! Even I hurt with that one. Yeah, I did not expect Alphys to do that much damage there, not gonna lie. But I did notice that battle animations are turned off right now, so I definitely gotta remember to do that right now. And now it's time to head on into the Stoan side gym. Here in Pokemon Shield, it is of course going to be a ghost type gym. As you can see from the very spooky logo up there, but of course, before we do anything, we gotta say hello 
to the ball guy. And I was curious if he actually would give us a different Pokeball than in Sword, but nope, still just a heavy ball. So let's go. Actually, I wanted to check if the fighting uniform is for sale here. And it is, but it doesn't show abs, I guess. <laughs> I'm not saying I want to see our character specifically in it, but I just was curious whether or not the outfit or uniform would be like that. At least Nessa's uniform, the water type gym leader, does actually cut off and show the character's belly button, so I was curious about B's outfit. Alright, let's talk to our dad here. Eep, a gym challenger! Are you here to challenge the gym? In that case, okay, of course you gotta change into our uniform, but what kind of question is that, dude? Are you a gym challenger? Oh, you wouldn't happen to be challenging the gym, Captain Obvious. Number 69, do your best or your worst. Nothing weird at all about that number, okay? Don't ask me about it. Anyway, it's time to transition. And I was wondering if the gym mission would be the same here in Pokemon Shield. Looks like it kind of is, although the design is definitely different. But still, we got the pinball slash pachinko machine thing. To complete the mission, you'll need to ride in one of these cups and make your way to the goal while trying to avoid the obstacles. Let me tell you a bit more. Okay, well, we know how to operate it this time from Pokemon Sword, of course. Uh, so basically, rotate your control stick and you can control the direction of the cup. So let's hop in it and get to it. Go! Wait a minute. I just realized this teacup is kind of based on Poltegeist. I don't know if the one in B's gym was, but it looked a little different. I'm gonna have to side by side it now, but I gotta say I'm kind of liking this one more so far because it's got a bit more of a ghosty design. No boxing gloves to hit us around, which is nice. Instead we got some weird creepy claws waiting to snatch us up. Spin the key cups too much and gym challengers what? Go flying? Who? Okay, Clive, can open your eyes now, dude. Or maybe his eyes are open, and I'm just being a little insensitive right now. But anyway, his first Pokemon is going to be a Pumpkaboo. And yes, he does have more than one Pokemon, just had to confirm real quick. But here in Pokemon Shield, like I said, my Pokemon team is very different. I mean, I wasn't going to play it through with the same exact roster, so you can get a glimpse of them there as they level up. Uh, but I'm sure you'll see more of them as we get through the gym mission here. So next up, we got a little Phantom. And I have a feeling that Harley is going to be taking care of most of the gym trainers here. If not Alistair, the gym leader himself too, because while well, Harley's the only super effective Pokemon I've got on the team, like Bagul, the Perserker, which is actually Galarian Meowth's evolution, I believe he's got a dark type move, but definitely not as strong as Harley's Night Slash. And it looks like this guy's got another Pumpkaboo, but this one looks significantly bigger than the last one, or the first one we took down. And that's because Pumpkaboo actually has different sizes. You can catch it in the wild at four different sizes, I think. And it's really hard to tell when you're actually looking for them in the wild what size you'll get, but that battle there just made it really obvious to me that they do have different sizes. So anyway, let's get back in the teacup and spin to win. Oh, not into the claw, though. Woo -hoo -hoo. Okay. I wonder if we're actually supposed to go into the claws in this one, too. Oh, okay, we are. I'm like, maybe the claws actually just grab you in this one, but no, they'll still smack you back. So, I guess it makes a little bit more sense to have punching uh, boxing gloves, you know, because they actually punch you into the air. Whereas these claw things don't really look like they would bounce you back. It looks like they would just grab onto you and you'd lose this challenge, so... I don't know, it would have been cool to see a slightly different version of this same, uh... minigame slash theme park attraction thing here, where you have to avoid the claws instead. But, this time we got Gym Trainer Lin, and she's actually got a Corsola of her own! Oh no, it's so sad! Man, I don't even want to fight it! Like, I feel so bad for Galarian Corsola, which you may have seen in the beginning of the video. Uh, I have one of my own on the team right now, even though I don't know if I'm gonna use it on my final team for Pokemon Shield here, but I really like the Pokemon, despite how sad its history is. It's like lore in the Pokedex. I don't know, it's just like maybe pity 
just sadness makes me want to use one on the team and turn that frown upside down. But yeah, you can see there the one I've got. Its name is literally Corsola's face, like the face that it's making in this version. The Galarian form. You know what I'm trying to say. That was Lin's only Pokemon though. Losing made me remember, the gym leader wears a mask. Oh, that's right, he's got a Shy Guy mask. Honestly, kind of forgot about gym leader Alistair. I mean, B was just so impressive that, I don't know, I didn't really think much about Alistair, but, oh, come on, we can do this, yes. Once again, we're somehow gonna make it and bam, get slapped right down there, but, um, okay, yeah, we're supposed to go to the left. I messed this up exactly the same way in B's gym, but somehow, even though I'm doing the same exact puzzle again, I still messed it up. <laughs> it's not really a puzzle. I mean, I guess you could consider this kind of a puzzle, but it's more like a mini game, I guess. And now my favorite part. Let's get smacked around and down to the finish line. But of course, we've got one last trainer to take out. I'm sure Harley can make quick work of him. Can you understand what Ghost Pokemon are weak to? I don't think so. Well, they're pretty much only weak to themselves and dark type. I don't think there's any other weakness to ghost type, right? So usually they are kind of hard to take down because of course if you use a ghost Pokemon against them, you have the chance of getting hit back with super effective yourself. Which is why I'm keeping Corsola in the party right now. Probably not going to make an appearance in this gym battle, sadly. But at least it's getting a little stroll out, you know, seeing some fresh air. We got to give Corsola all the love we can, you know? And it looks like Drifblim is going to be coming out next. I guess there's not really any point to switching out. I want Harley to get as much experience as she can because I believe it evolves into Obstagoon at level 35. So we could get that with Alistair. I mean, I don't think so. We're still a little bit far away. And I doubt that his Pokemon will give us that much experience. But we're definitely cutting it close. So you never know. Let's just nice slash the Drifblim and see how much it gives us. Actually, there's also Aftermath, right? Does it even have Aftermath? Or did it have a different ability? Uh, okay. Guess that Drifblin didn't have it. If you understand type matchups, it's only natural that it'd be easier to win. Yeah, they tell us this like it's supposed to be some kind of revolutionary tactic in Pokemon. Like, do people playing these games really not know about type matchups? Like, it's just Rock, Paper, Scissor. Except really complicated Rock, Paper, Scissor. But our mission is complete. Which means it's time <clears throat> to transition into the stadium. The eeriest stadium in the Gala region. The Ghost Stadium. I wonder if Alistair has maybe activated some kind of alternate dimension. And that's why it's Ghost here instead of fighting Alistair. Huh? <laughs> here I go. I'm gonna need you to speak up, dude. It's kind of loud in here with the crowd and everything. Was he trying to say, like, milady? Okay, well, this creepy kid here talks even less than B does. Like, I was thinking B barely said a word during our gym battle. And this kid actually says even less. So, let's take him down. No words necessary. Actually should have left off with... Let off with Alphys. Uh, since Galarian Mask is going to be his first Pokemon. And that is a ground and ghost type. And I just noticed in the background there, this dude is sponsored by some kind of camera company that has Dottler as the logo. That's pretty cool. Also get a glimpse of that Rotom drone that seems to be recording all the matches for television, of course, because here in the Gala region, Pokemon battles are the greatest form of entertainment. I mean, what else would be? If Pokemon battles were in real life, that would definitely be the best form of entertainment. But this little dude is actually going to disable our Night Slash. That's kind of annoying. But I don't think he uses potions or anything, so we can just hit the lick and that'll finish off Yamas there, who was barely holding on by a thread with very little HP left. So our lick will finish that and we get Scary Face, which I don't really want. Oh, Bagul is getting a level up too and apparently learning Fury Swipes, but yeah, I don't think we need that either. So skip and his next Pokemon is going to be Mimikyu. Which means that our Dark-type attacks are not going to be as effective. But 
our steel type attacks definitely will be since Mimikyu is a fairy type as well. So, Bagul, you just got the level up. It's time to show your skills, buddy. Look at this monster. <laughs> like, what is wrong with Galarian Meowth? Or rather, Perserker, it's evolution. Oh, come on, give me the right angle. I want to see the, the Galarian Meowthness, the creepiness that it's got going. Perfectly fitting for Alistair's gym here. I don't know who's creepier, honestly, the Perserker here or Mimikyu. All I know is this Iron Head is gonna hurt, my dude. Oh, wait, I forgot about disguise. Oh, well, I guess that's a thing. I could have used Fake Out, but of course that doesn't work on Ghost-type Pokemon, so technically I couldn't have used it. It's fine, though. Let's just go for another Iron Head to bop it this time. Now that its disguise is busted down, can definitely hurt it up with some Iron Head. And yeah, that is going to destroy poor little Mimikyu. Really cool to see that Pokemon coming back for Sword and Shield, though. Even though it was just introduced in Pokemon Sun and Moon. Um, Corsola is up next. And I would totally pit it against my own Corsola, but I know that's just a recipe for disaster. It is not going to end well. So we're going to send in Alphys. Oh, wait a minute. This ain't no Corsola. This is Corsola, the evolution, which... Oh my gosh, what happened, Corsola? What is going on with that design? Oh no, I knew it was going to use Curse, bro. Why didn't I just Water Pulse? Like, I figured this thing was going to mostly have attacks that are more status damage, like Curse, you know, instead of actual moves like Shadow Ball. But hopefully it's got something, because Sucker Punch only works when they attack as well. And yeah, it looks like this time it's going for a damaging move, so... Sucker Punch is going to be able to hit, but it's also going to activate that weak armor, so it's very fast now. And it's going for the Hex. Hopefully, Alphys can take it. Oh my gosh. No, not the curse. Oh no, the nail in the coffin. Literally this time, because it's going to put Alphys in the grave. And that means someone else is going to come out to finish the job. But because of the weak armor, this Corsola... Or Cursola. It's such a weird name, Cursola. It's like barely different, so it's kind of hard to say, but it's very fast right now. And I don't know if Francis is faster, but thankfully he is, because I forgot that he's actually a bug psychic type. So if Cursola hit us with the hex, probably would have destroyed us. But thankfully we were faster, and we hit the Shadow Ball to take down the sad little coral reef there. Final Pokemon for Alistair is going to be Gengar. And if we learned anything from our battle with B, this is most likely going to be a Dynamax Gengar. My very last Pokemon. How lonely. How frightening. I mean Gigantamax. I always get that confused. But yeah, this is going to be a Gigantamax Gengar, which I've heard was in the game. I kind of had my suspicions from the very beginning when we saw the posters in Hop's room. There was Charizard, Machamp, and Gengar. And it said these are the top three most popular Pokemon of Galar. So I figured that we might just be seeing Dynamax forms for them. Or Gigantamax or whatever. You guys know what I'm trying to say. Gengar, Gigantamax, swallow everything in darkness. Okay, calm down, Alistair. Getting <laughs> a little creeped out here. But it's probably nothing compared to how creeped out we will be with Gigantamax Gengar. Oh. Look at that mouth. Jeez, dude. Man's about to swallow up the whole stadium. Bro, is that a black hole? Holy moly. Well, Francis is still faster, so that side beam's gonna hit. But here comes the max darkness. And that is definitely going to hurt. But not quite enough to finish us off, actually. So, can definitely go for another side beam uh, before Francis, you know, basically it's his last stand here. Unless we crit or something, but we don't, so yeah. Sorry, Francis. You did really good, though. For being a little ladybug, that was quite a lot of damage there. And you didn't even Dynamax, so yeah, that's, that's a job well done right there. But you already know I want to Dynamax my Harley here. I mean, if we did Dynamax Francis, we might have been able to take it down, too. And it would have been pretty cool to see the Dynamax or Beetle. Which I think also might have a Gigantamax form, but... Oh, gosh. 
Okay, that really hurt, but Harley tanked it out, and with this Night Slash, we should finish it off. Actually, we didn't even need our own Dynamax there. I totally forgot to push the button. <laughs> Which just proves you don't actually even need Dynamax to beat the Gigantamax Pokemon. But in the end, Harley did it. So proud of you, my little goon. I nearly lost my mask from the shock. That was... Wow. I can see your skill for what it is. What, so it was all in act? The mask and the voice and everything? Whoa. Okay. I was not expecting this Pokemon to evolve. Like, I predicted Linoon might evolve or Alphys, the Drizzile. But in the end, it's going to be Karkul, Molly, evolving into Colossal. Look at this absolute unit gonna get registered in the decks, also known as the coal Pokemon. While it's engaged in battle, its mountain of coal will burn bright red, sending off sparks that scorch the surrounding area. And that is of course the final evolution of Roly Coley, and it's gonna be learning the signature move Tarshot as well, which I have never heard of before, but apparently it pours sticky tar over the target, lowering speed and then the target becomes weaker to fire type moves, so not bad, I guess. Um, might just learn that instead of incinerate, I guess, because we're more of a physical than special attacker. I mean, the stats were pretty balanced out, but whatever. It's nice to have the exclusive move on the Pokemon, so let's get the tar shot and see what's going on with Alistair. Crumbs, that was ace. Here, a ghost badge. Still not much words coming out of him, but he is going to shake on it, and we get the Ghost Badge. You could say he didn't stand a ghost of a chance. No glove, bro? What are you doing? Good luck with, um, everything. Get those grubby hands off of me. Challenger Citrus, you've defeated our gym leader, Alistair. Take this TM for your victory. And we're going to get ourselves Hex. I wonder if you can get this TM in Pokemon Sword somehow. Like, it's probably in the wild somewhere, right? And a complimentary ghost uniform! Why, thank you. It doesn't have the mask, though, so I don't really care about it too much. It'd be sick if you could get Alistair's mask, or if the fighting uniform from B actually had, you know, B's design. But anyway, uh, that is gonna do it for this episode. I mean, this cutscene will most likely be the exact same here in Pokemon Shield. So, there's not really much else to show. I mean, I guess we could go into the Glimwood Tangle and maybe find ourselves a Galarian Ponyta, which is another version exclusive here in Pokemon Shield. So, um, I know we can't get past the Team Yell Grunts, but yes, we can still run into stuff in the grass. And it's gonna be a Wild Hatchrem. Holy moly, this thing's at level 36, dude. Am I underleveled or what? Like... I guess in Pokemon Shield I am, because in Sword, my team is closer to that level, but still, what is going on? I feel like these levels just out of nowhere started spiking up, so maybe I should just train up Harley here a little bit too, and we might just get its evolution to happen as well, uh, which I believe is level 35 at nighttime, and I'm definitely recording this at nighttime, even though right now... At least in Stoan side, in the city, it shows it daytime. I know that my Switch for sure, it's nighttime, so... Anyway, uh, Hatram was not the Pokemon I was looking for, of course, so... Let's keep searching around in the grass, and eventually we will find... Shynotic! Still not quite what I'm looking for, though, but... I'm pretty sure Galarian Ponyta is somewhere around here. And so is Morgrim, okay! Bit of a spoiler for next episode, dude. Or I guess kind of a preview of Impidimp's evolution there. And I wonder if we should just take it down or maybe catch it for some experience. I mean, Alphys is like basically about to evolve with the next Pokemon it takes out. So you might just be it, Morgrim. I don't know if this is considered a cave or if it's nighttime right now, but I'm going for the Dusk Ball and it looks like it's working out as we have caught ourselves a Morgrim. But I'm sure we'll catch one in the next episode too, so I'll probably just skip over the Pokedex description for now. Or actually, they're kind of different, the descriptions in Sword and Shield, so 
The Devious Pokemon, the first dark and fairy type, with sly cunning, it tries to lure people into the woods. Some believe it to have the power to make crops grow. Huh, is this dark Grookey right here? Still not the Pokemon I'm looking for. Come on, Ponyta. I know you've got to be in here somewhere. Whoa, okay, we've got another new Pokemon here in Didi, which I believe is also a version exclusive. Um, at least in Pokemon Shield, you can find the female version only, and in Pokemon Sword, you will find the male version of this same Pokemon. So I guess we'll also catch this one here. Now, I wonder which one we've been seeing in the Pokemon Center, because I think it might be this one, like the Name Raider and Move Relearner dude. I guess he has the female version of NVD. Okay, the Dust Ball is not going to work at all this time, so maybe I'll save my last one for Ponyta, if we can ever find it, that is. So for now, let's go for the pretty pink Heal Ball here, and that is not going to work out at all either. Um, Probably should have bought... Oh wait, no, we do have Ultra Balls, okay. I don't think I bought them, I probably found them somewhere in the wild, but that's gonna work out regardless. Or not, still Indeedy is busting out of these Pokeballs like it's nothing. Oh, you know what I think it might be? So, I don't remember where I read this, or I think I might have heard it from a friend, but catch rates in this game are dependent on your own Pokemon's level. So because this Indeedy is at level 35, and none of my Pokemon are actually over 35. It's going to be a lot more difficult to catch. Though I don't know if that's proven or not. I'm pretty sure it is. Like, to keep you from catching Pokemon too over leveled. Uh, you have to use a Pokemon that's around its same level. Yeah, the Ultra Ball or the Great Ball did a lot better there. But still was not able to capture. But, come on. Fifth time's the charm. I believe in this Great Ball. Please. If it breaks out, dude, I'm done. All right, we're done. Like, I would have never thought that we would struggle against this thing, but I guess we've got to take it down. Not going to get to see that Pokedex description. I mean, I probably should have sent out a higher level Pokemon earlier when we were using the Ultra Balls, but hey, at least we're going to get the level 35 on Alphys, which is what I wanted in the first place. And some money from Bagul there, but most importantly... Drizzile is going to be evolving, but what will Alphys become? I don't know. Let's see. Congratulations! Alphys is now Inteleon. Looking like Gex the Gecko out here. Known as the secret agent Pokemon, its nictitating membranes let it pick out foes' weak points so it can precisely blast them with water that shoots from its fingertips at Mach 3. What the heck is nictitating membranes? Um, well, this is certainly an interesting design for a starter evolution. Let me know what you guys think of Inteleon here, as well as Rillaboom, and if you've seen the final evolution of Scorebunny, which one is your favorite of the three? As we're going to be learning Snipe Shot, which is an 80 power special move, definitely stronger than Water Pulse. So I guess we're going to go ahead and give that over to Inteleon. Hasn't learned the best moves aside from that, though, I got to say. The level up movesets for these starter Pokemon are definitely not the best. Like Rillaboom, too, or Mojo over in Pokemon Sword uh, has barely learned any good attacks, I feel like, aside from its main grass move. But... And finally, after who knows how many more encounters, Ponyta is going to appear. Look at that entrance from Inteleon though, the way it comes into the battle, that's so cool. But are we actually capable of hitting it with a U-turn and not destroying it? I mean, probably. So let's go for a snipe shot first, try and weaken it a little bit and see that exclusive move. Look at that animation, no! What the heck, Alphys? Why? Come on, why? Alright, I guess I should have seen that coming. You gotta be kidding me though. I really gotta look for another one now. That took so long, dude! Okay, thankfully it didn't take too long to find another one. And this time it looks like we got a female one. Since you can see the floofy tail there, or not. For some reason I thought that the floofy tail meant that it was male or female. Maybe I was misdirected from the trailers, but 
This time we're gonna U-turn for sure, just to inflict a good amount of damage, but not completely destroy it. And I think we're gonna go out to Harley and hit a couple of licks. Well, not like that, but I don't think Lick will take it out. It's a very, very not powerful move. Uh, weak, I guess is the word for that, huh? <laughs> anyway, went for agility, which means it's gonna be faster now, but Psybeam, of course, can't hurt us. And you gotta be kidding me. Oh my gosh. I am the worst. Okay, I deserve that one, actually. But, at least Harley is gonna grow to level 35 and actually not evolve. So, I guess it's not nighttime, technically, in this area. Because I'm pretty sure Linoon is ev evolves into Obstagoon at level 35 at night. Alright, I'm not even gonna try hitting it anymore. We're just gonna try to catch it right at the level it's at. So, Harley, get out here. You're at level 35, so that's good. We're higher level than it is, and it's actually going to go for Fairy Wind this time. Don't know why you didn't use that earlier, but uh, I guess we've got no choice but to go for the Heal Ball, as this is a Pokemon that I do want to use here on my Pokemon Shield team. Even though it'd be nicer to have a female Ponyta, I mean, I don't really care. Most of my team right now is female anyway, so it'd be a nice contradiction to have maybe the most stereotypically female Pokemon be male instead. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, at least Galarian Ponyta does look like a traditionally girly Pokemon. I know that my little pony fans are gonna be coming at me for saying that, but this Pokemon will look into your eyes and read the contents of your heart. If it finds evil there, it promptly hides away. That's so cute. It is a pure psychic type, but I believe when it evolves, it does become a fairy type, so for now, we're gonna send it to the box and wrap up this episode because we've spent more than, way more than the time I thought we would here in Pokemon Shield already. I just wanted to beat Alistair, but hey, we also got to show off Inteleon's evolution and exclusive moves, so hope you guys enjoy the extra length Pokemon Shield exclusive. Next time, we will head on up to the ruins and see what is going on with that explosion we heard. Thank you all for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next episode.